let's get to the Couturier stuff because it's too good not to talk. My God, this team. Uh, so Sean Couturier, we wow. all know his struggles uh, basically through the second half of the season. The They're, struggles are real. Yeah. Like, let's, let's, let's he has get, not been good. Let's get that out of the way now. It's not like this is John Tortorella inventing the struggles of Sean Couturier. You have the numbers right here. First 33 game, first 31 games, 19 goals, 14 assists. I wrote an article at the end of December basically saying he should be being discussed. And I, I hold to this. At that time, he should have been being discussed not as the Selkie favorite. I think Barkov is going to rightfully run away with it. But he should have been Get in some the down ballot, yeah, down ballot voting. He should have been in the conversation at that point. Really, this the struggle really kicked off, I would say, in like mid-January. He missed a couple games with an injury. Since he's been back, he has not been the same. You have the numbers here. Last 33 games, two goals, 11 assists. Should be 12, but the NHL is, right. for some reason, acting insane right. about this Delorier goal. Yeah, the, I, I, oh, yeah, Delorier got an unassisted goal. That's likely. If you slow it down, we're talking about the, the goal Delorier scored in Boston. The reason why they snubbed him for the assist, I, can, I get it. I don't at all. Is that... What it looks like happened is Couturier, the puck is actually on Andrew Peak's stick. Couturier hits Andrew Peak's stick, which then pushes the puck to Delorier. So it was basically a forced turnover rather than an assist. However, really, it's abundantly clear that goal does not happen if Sean Couturier is not really forced I really thought he got his stick in there, but you definitely slowed it down more than I did. I will just say, I think you should be rewarded in some way for what is possibly going to be the final goal of that dude's career like, possible <laughs> there's a real possibility oh boy. anyway regardless couturier struggles now there's a lot of people who are like he earned this scratch i don't think it's that bad but i don't think it's to that your bad point either. like i still think he's if not one of the six he's one of the nine best forwards on this team even while struggling but he has been nowhere near the level we saw in the first half of the season agreed i would say that over in the second half of the season, he has played like a decent bottom six center, which is not good enough for what the Flyers need him to be without a doubt. I mean, we saw what the Flyers can be when he's playing like a legitimate top six center. They do what they did in the first half of the year when they put themselves in position where now they might be able to hang on to a playoff spot. But part of the reason why the Flyers are below 500 really since the middle of January is because since the middle of January, Sean Gatteri has played like a bottom six center. They don't have a, they don't have anything resembling a top center. Yeah. Like Morgan, I mean, Morgan Frost, Frost has been the closest thing they have. Yeah. yeah he's the closest thing they have. What do we all think he is? Yeah. He's like a number two, number three, somewhere in that like yeah. middle six range, ideally on a good team. So Sean Gatteri has certainly dropped off. I do not think you can make a case, a really strong, statistically sound case, that Sean Gatteri is not one of the 12 best forwards on the roster right now. I don't think that is possible. And I, and while John Tortorella can say that, you know, I just put the best lineup on the ice, he can't actually believe that's the case, which tells you that either he is delusional, which I don't think he is. No. I, I don't think he actually believes that Bobby Brink, who he doesn't seem to think is a clear-cut NHL player, Ole Luxell, who he wouldn't even play for weeks on end, and Nick Deloria, who he's been regularly scratching yes. since January, are all better <laughs> hockey players than Sean Gatterier. If you hook him up to a lie detector, there is no way that John Tortorella actually believes that. So if we will acknowledge that that is at least a, a white lie told to the media to spin this in the way he wants to. The reason for scratching Sean Couturier goes beyond, I just don't think he's one of our 12 best forwards, which is why we can get into the conversation as to what's really going on. And there. that's what's so, like, that's the interesting part here. Like, guy, you know, his struggles, the scratch, where it starts for me is that on Valentine's Day, he was named the Sean Couturier right. pronouns, pal. He was named the captain. 35 days after that, yeah. he is a healthy scratch. Now, there are different processes for naming captains. It's the teams do it different. Generally speaking, it happens at the start of a season, uh, at the end of training camp. John Turrell obviously does the, nothing by the book. So no. but the simple like election, sometimes it's a locker room, it's the boys decide. Sometimes it's a coach call. We know that John Tortorella has taken the C off of a guy before <laughs> who was a pretty damn great player himself at one point. Um, whose decision really was it to name a captain? So everything I have heard and every like 
all of the all of the digging and reporting I have done, both on and off the record, tells me that it was all torts. That because I know there's been some conjecture on social media that actually Tortorella never wanted to name Criteria the captain. Mm-hmm. This is all coming from above. This is I, his revenge. I have heard <laughs> everything I've heard tells me this was Torts' <laughs> yeah. idea because Tortorella was the one who's been running this show from a captaincy standpoint. He's the guy who didn't want a captain last year. He's the guy at the start of this season. This was like the first day of training camp. He basically is like, oh, I'm going to say it right now so you guys don't bother me all year. I'm not naming a captain this year. This was a decision by Torts from everything I've reported, from everything other people have reported. So it's, I, I don't think this is a case of, we're all getting bad information. I think this was Torts' idea, was that I want a captain. Sean Gattari has shown me that he deserves to be the captain. I'm naming Sean Gattari the captain on freaking Valentine's Day. Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> really appreciate it. But anyway, he decides he's going to do that. This was a Tortorella decision, which makes it all the weirder that a little over a month later, he's scratching him. If this was entirely Torts' decision... Why then a month later do you scratch the guy who you like you could have easily just, just not, given, just it not given it to him? Everyone would have been fine with that. You set the expectation there wasn't going to be a captain this year, and then you pull a rabbit out of your hat midway through the year and give the guy the captaincy only for a month later to scratch him. And like you noticed yesterday, it seemed like the people who were the most agitated about this were the media in Canada. And part of this oh, you don't is, say. is because Canadian media has always, even more so than Flyers fans, who very much put the captain on the pedestal, Canadian hockey fans think the captaincy is this exalted form of hockey deity, where like if you're the captain, you're the captain, and that's the most important thing ever. So the Canadian media was losing their goddamn minds yesterday, and in fairness to them, this doesn't happen. The last time... A, can- a-, a captain has been scratched for reasons that weren't, well, there's two games left in the year. We're doing some load matters yeah. before the playoffs. The last time was a decade ago when Florida did it to Ed Jovanowski, who was really at the end of his career. And that was like, if I remember correctly, like not a good hockey team. So this is a rarity. And it does open the question of, like, Tortorella knows all this. He's not an idiot. He knows that captains don't get scratched. He knows that he just gave this guy the captaincy a month ago, which makes this all the weirder. To me, it like I have different thoughts about maybe what the coach is thinking, and we'll never know because he I don't think he's and like out of his mind, like delusional. No, I don't but think so. But he either. is a crazy person. He is impulsive, so, to be sure. Yeah, yeah, impulsive. Impulsive is a good way to but play. I do wonder if this entire thing was calculated because leading up to this, leading up to the decision to name him captain, it was like that's when the rumor mill really starts going. It's a little less than a month before the trade deadline. We don't know who's going, but we know someone is on the way out. Like yeah. they're gonna trade yeah, it seemed at like least they were one defenseman. Scott Lawton's name's gonna be out there. Who knows what else is going to be coming? We might need something, just formalize the leadership group here, turn the locker room over to the boys. Putting the captaincy on him puts that spotlight on Sean Couturier. Yes. You knew things were also going to go downhill at some point. Like this stretch of games, they were never going to come out of this unscathed. They were never going six and one. In especially this after you trade Sean. Yeah, Walker. especially after the Sean Walker trade, and then all the defensive injuries that happened. There was going to be some sort of adversity. Absolutely. This, at least for a game. Seems to have, and I fucking hate using this word, galvanized the crew. Um, they did. came out. This wasn't the Florida game, but this was as close to a good, like uh, the most complete game they have played in a long time yeah, outside of weeks. that Florida game. In a few weeks, to be sure. I, I don't want to give Torts this much credit, but I feel like this may have been all some, maybe not the exact components of what he ended up doing, scratching him, but like you could see him starting to lower Kutz's ice time. You could just see this kind of building towards this circumstance. I wonder if this was all a way to pull that, uh, you know, well, like the Dallas green, it's going to be 25 guys against me. They're going to have that. Cause they've had the us against the world thing all year. And now that's kind of wearing thin. Cause they're just, I mean, 
the f- they, they got no defensemen left. Yeah, you yeah. know, TK's coming back from injury. All these things they got. They're down to their third string goalie. Some games, you know, what if this was all a grand plan? So he, what I'll <laughs> say about that is, I think there's truth to what you're saying in the sense that I do believe he. There was more to this than just scratching Couture. Yeah, I, I think that he did very much realize that the room would not like it, and I think that was intentional. I believe that he looked at it as, I'm going to, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, about the idea of, I mentioned it last night, the idea of him being an agent of chaos. I think he hated what the status quo has been for the last few weeks, and this was a way for him to throw the biggest possible bomb into the locker room, see how they react. But like the status quo had to change because if they kept playing the way they were playing, they were just going to keep losing, especially given the teams they were playing. This was a way to throw a jolt into the room. I asked Morgan Frost that after the game, like, do you think this was John Tortorell trying to jolt the team? And Morgan Frost basically said, well, going to have to ask towards that. I don't know. It was more or less like, I'm not talking about the game. Morgan Frost is great because he's a really, really nice guy to, to, to interact with. But like, it was you could see in his eyes it was kind of like yeah, good luck getting an answer for torts <laughs> it was hilarious but but i do think that that was part of it the part that i really hope this wasn't really all planned because i think you could if you wanted to theorize that part of the reason why john tortorella gave Katuri the captaincy was to have this in his back pocket where well, if I give him the ca- if I give him the captaincy, then when I if I have to scratch somebody, I can scratch him. And I really hope that's not the case because to me, that's just cruel. That's like you are Lucy with the football. Like you are purposely <laughs> giving someone hope just to then cruelly tear it away from him and make it even more embarrassing when you go to that. Well, because look, had Sean Couturier not had the captaincy, had he just been Sean Couturier? Would it have been a big deal if he gets scratched yesterday? Sure. People would have would have noticed. It would have been a thing. But it wouldn't have been this big of a thing. The way it becomes Against this big— Against the Leafs, wearing yeah. the C, this was a big deal. The way it becomes this big of a deal is because he has the C. Did he give him the C just to give himself this possibility in the future? I really hope not because, to me, that's just cruel. Like, that is being straight-up manipulative, and I hope the players— don't think that's why he did it because that's how you potentially lose a room. What it does seem like is at the very least, Tortorella did this knowing that he's going to piss everyone off and he wanted to do that because he wanted to shake up the status quo and this is a way to do that. I really hope this wasn't that calculated, but I do absolutely believe there was an element of calculation there in terms of making himself the villain in a Herb Brooks sort of way. Yes, like this team has played with a fuck you attitude all season, it's why they are where they are. Yeah. They have out like the team has been better than the sum of its parts all season. We came into this year like, look at this blue line. They are going to suck. They have not sucked. Hopelessness, as much as you don't want it, it must be seeping in at some points. Like you lose seven nothing to Tampa after playing one of your best games of the year. Like, ah, oh, we just, oh man, like that. Couple of minute stretch against uh, against the Leafs last time. Yeah. Like, oh my God, what can we do? Yeah. The Boston game, same yeah, thing. The la- the last Toronto game, the goalie yeah. just isn't good. The the Boston game, you make that comeback after, and then yeah. Sandstrom pulls uh, and just pulls up and doesn't make a stop. He needs to stop. That must be setting in. You needed another. You needed another rallying point. And I think this was it. Was it entirely calculated giving them C? No, I don't think that's I don't, the case. I, I really hope but not. I do and think, I don't think so. I don't think he's that I cruel. think it did give him a future target. A yeah. future potential, whether it's I'm going to put him on the fourth line or I'm going to single him out. Whatever it is, that is then. Because he's the representative. He's the captain of the team. He is the representative of not just himself, but all the guys in the locker room. Yeah. You single him out. You're kind of calling out everybody. Like, it's not just calling out Sean Couturier when you bench the cat. No, you are. You are. And I think this is my biggest concern about the whole thing. And I, I had a long debate with people in our Discord this morning about this. Become a diehard. Get in the Discord. Become a diehard. Get in the Discord. But here's the thing. Undeniably, in my mind, in the short term, this had 
the desired impact that Tortorella wanted. He wanted to jolt the room. Mission accomplished. He jolted the room. He pissed off Sean Couture. He probably pissed off multiple other guys in that room as well. But what they didn't do last night, which could have happened. I mean, they, they could have easily just been like, well, fuck this guy. Yeah. Like, okay, you know, we're just going to play the way we want. And then they get blown out eight nothing. Like that was, that was on the table as an option. Instead, they rallied. You had in particular, and I think Tortorella loved this, the fact that you had guys who I dubbed in our postgame show, the young vets, Owen Tippett, Morgan Frost, Cam York. Those are the guys who stepped up, you know, whether it was consciously or subconsciously, it was almost like, all right, well, Coots isn't there to, do, it gonna be? to do that stuff. Who's it going to be? I guess it's us. We all we got, we all we need. We got these young guys who they want to be part of the, the future core step up and make plays and carry the team. I think Tortorella loved that. So in the short term, Tortorella got exactly what he wanted. He got a win, a big win when they really needed it, and he got a win in a way that he's happy. They blocked a shitload of shots. So they show they're still committed to the Tortorella style. The young guys we want to see more out of pretty much all stepped up. He had to love the reaction. My concern is, and, and I put this in our Discord, if you use, if you, you could use a tactical nuke a few times, but there's always going to be some fallout. And you never know when ultimately the atmosphere is going to get so saturated with radiation that everyone dies. This fucking guy. However, like, I think he used a tactical nuke last year mm -hmm. when he benched Travis Sanheim in Calgary with all of his family and friends. He survived that one. There was some fallout. He had to spend the summer smoothing out the edges with, 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 with Sanheim. They had some conversations. It ends up working out. Sanheim's had a good year. Now he uses another one with benching the captain, something that this is not like a, a manufactured story. Watch the TSN broadcast. Go listen to Sportsnet shows yesterday in Canada. This is a big deal. This is a national story. This is something that straight up embarrassed your captain who you just gave the C2 last month. This is a big story. It's another tactical nuke. Maybe John Tortorella, that it's not going to be that big of a deal. Whatever. There's some fallout. He gets by it. Him and Couturier next year are fine. I just wonder how many of these big, embarrassing things a coach can do before the entire team just decides this dude is a cruel asshole and I don't want to play for him anymore. That's, I, I appreciate the fact that the team realizes the leash Tortorella has. Because listen, we and this is not an indictment of the former leadership group, but we have seen teams kind of just go, fuck this guy. Yeah. We have they seen did that happen. AV. We have seen... and. They did not because they know he ain't getting fired. Yeah. We all silly like the mayor.